Yeah. All right. And so I want to keep it moving because we have two speakers who will discuss embracing creativity to reap success. Now, our first is a tech entrepreneur, digital marketer and investor. Over the last decade, he co-founded five technology-driven companies. Most notably, he is the co-founder of Tech Beach Retreat, or TBR, the leading technology ecosystem builder in the Caribbean. TBR achieves this through organizing events, providing education, and making investments in the tech sector. TBR has garnered attention from global and regional publications like Forbes and Inc. Magazine. He received recognition from the TNT Chamber of Industry and Commerce as the Champion Entrepreneur of the Year. Additionally, he serves as a next-gen board member of the Inter-American Development Bank. And today, he will speak to us about the methods to come up with innovative ideas. And that tech entrepreneur is none other than Mr. Cal Maloney, co-founder of Tech Beach Retreat. Let's give him a round of applause. All right, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? You good? All right, cool. Uh, Mr. Chowlin, that was, that was really good. Thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate it. I appreciate getting some of the insights because I was wondering how some of these things came to be, and, and it was good to get some, some really good insights. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, as my speakers before me came, um, they say, um, all protocols observed. I uh, just want to thank Nedco for having an event such as this to really help develop entrepreneurs locally. So some people may know me, some people may not. Let me give a little brief introduction into who I am. Uh, my name is Kyle Maloney, and I am the co-founder of Tech Beach, uh, TBR. And uh, I am a technology entrepreneur. So different to Mr. Chowlinan, who said he could have gone on to chat GPT, but he didn't. I certainly did. <laughs> so, so reading from my ChatGPT speech, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I only took a few points. <laughs> so, so let me tell you, I'm here to speak to you guys about creativity. And when we typically think about creativity, we kind of more so begin thinking about artists, and designers and and and, and, and mus musicians, but in reality, creativity is, is 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 a mindset that that is an approach to everything that we do. It is a problem-solving mindset, right? And so, and so whether you're in whether you're in the technology space, whether you're you're an artist, whether you're a musician, it, it is it is the approach that you're taking to think about what is this problem. Or what is this, if, if you're a musician, what is this expression that I'm feeling that I want to then go out into the world and share this, this, this solution with the world, yeah? So let me give a bit of context into me and, and, and to how I've leveraged my creative process. And not only creativity, but what, is, what I think is really important is the embracing of failure. The embracing of failure as a part of the, the creative process. The, the typical creative person, like a musician, I just keep going back because he just came right before me, would tell you about the amount of, of songs that they would write that weren't hits, you know? And as an entrepreneur, there are tons of ideas that weren't hits, you know? And so creativity requires a constant iterative process that takes you through a series of failures to get to that one hit. And so as an entrepreneur, we, we see it in that way. We see our creative process in that way as constantly iterating, building on the failures to get to that one hit. And so 10 years ago, which feels quite frankly like crazy that it's 10 years ago for me, I, I've co-founded a company called First Media. Some people may have known me for that, right? Um, First was meant to be like the Yelp of the Caribbean. You search for any business you're looking for and you see reviews and you're able to then the idea was that you'd be able to order from any local business and have it delivered and that sort of thing. And that's the vision of what we're trying to build uh, for the entire region. And this vision that we, we, we designed, we did a really amazing job of being able to sell this vision, so much so that Digicel invested a couple million US dollars 
into our business. Uh, I turned 36 four days ago. Um, and so this happened in 2014. So I was uh, 20, at the time of the investment, I was, um, I was 26, right? Um, yeah. And the young man just stood up there. How old he said he was? He was 25, right? And so um, at that time, me being 26, my, my brother being 24, and then my two other co-founders being 24 and 25, that was a phenomenal feat. And fast forward to today, uh, it still is. And how did we get there? <laughs> yeah. How, 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 did we, how did we get there? I'll tell you the secret sauce. The secret sauce is dreaming really, really freaking big. I think as a society, we kind of we kinda want to dream in a way that we feel uh, like just reduce our dreams, you know, to what we feel we could really do versus I always, tell this, I always say that my dad brainwashed me into believing that I could do and be anything. And I say brainwash because like it was strong, you know, it was like, son, you could do this, you could do whatever. And so many, you get so many external influences, you grow up reshaping what you feel that you could do and putting you in the boxes of what they know that they can do based on their own experiences. And so many times I just growing up, independent of what like is coming in coming from in my house, the reshaping of the external forces having me thinking, wait. This man crazy, or I crazy, or they crazy. Who crazy? You know, because he's telling me that this is possible, but the world outside, my teachers, friends, etc., is telling me that this other thing is possible, and what you're thinking is not possible, and it's not the way that we do it. And so, at a point in time, I, I, I spoke to my dad, and I'm like, Dad, like, is this, is this real? Like, you really think that, that we could pull this thing off? Luckily enough that I ended up having a, a group of friends that were equally brainwashed and some, to some degree, worse. They were like, bro, you serious? That's what you think we could do? We could do way more than that. And so, and so it was a group of us that came together that shared a common belief that we could, we could impact the world. We could change the world from the Caribbean. And our gift was our ability to, to create things leveraging technology. And so... I speak about failure because independent of achieving that major milestone and building a brand that a lot of people had come to know at the time, it ended up failing. We ended up running out of cash. We ended up not having an enabling environment to really help us grow and thrive as a young technology company and just young business people, uh, not like what you'd see that you'd hear about in all these stories of the young Silicon Valley entrepreneur becoming wildly successful at a very young age. Quite frankly, like I was really sure that that was going to be me. <laughs> but but uh, fate it had it differently. And it was, for me, just another step in the overall journey. And so the real problem, the problem that uh, caused it to not work was just the lack of enabling environment to help entrepreneurs grow, technology entrepreneurs in particular, right? And so Nedco is doing a great job for a certain segment, but within the segment of technology entrepreneurs, we know that the gap exists. And so thinking, once again, now at the end of that cycle, thinking, okay, how do I really solve this problem of this lack of enabling environment? And what is the enabling environment? The enabling environment for entrepreneurs to grow is access to mentors. So somebody who's built technology companies, you all might have seen him, um, the Facebook story. He had the founder of Napster in the early stages as one of his mentors, you know? And a lot of people have a lot of these major guys who've done really well in technology as access to them to help them grow their technology businesses. But within our region, that's a big gap. And so access to mentorship, access to creative forms of capital, that's another gap. You know, and so I was thinking, how do we really fill this gap so that not only when I start another company, but when other founders start companies, that 
there's a greater likelihood for them to actually win. Just putting, once again, putting it, putting the thoughts out into, into the world, trying to figure out what is next. And I have a deep-rooted faith in God that everything that I'm going through is preparing me for everything that I've ever asked for. And so I continue to step and walk in faith. That energy brought to me a partner to then work on what would be the next thing. So my business partner uh, now, his name is Kirk Anthony Hamilton, approached me saying, bro, I think I have the next thing for you to work on. And I think you need to leverage the experience of starting this company, achieving a certain level of success, but then it not working out and letting that be the bedrock for the next thing that you begin. And think the answer at that point in time was, let us create an event. And not just in a, in, in a normal conference way, let us leverage the energy and the ethos of our Caribbean-ness, our Caribbean backdrop sunset vibe energy to bring people into a place to then leverage that to begin creating an ecosystem of the kinds of people that we want to see. So Tech Beach Retreat was born on the death of first. Yeah? And so now I'm into, into this space, and this is 2016, Tech Beach. And so I'm thinking, how do I then attract some of the best people, the best minds in the world into into this community that I'm trying to build, coming from Trinidad, who doesn't really have a brand of being technology leaders in the world sort of thing. How can I do this? And so one, uh, I think the first thing is just being comfortable with, with your failures and leveraging that as the stepping stone for the next thing. I think like, Within our society, we kind of want to shy away and hide away from our failures and not speak about them. But in reality, they're the bedrock for what will become the next thing. And so in, uh, you learn that a lot when, when, when you're operating in, in Silicon Valley a lot, right? Like everyone is talking about, yeah, this is my third and fourth company, <laughs> you know? This is my third and fourth. My first two blew up, whatever, you know? And, and, so, and so wearing it is almost a, a badge of honor. Whereas in our society, if you fail, you kind of don't want to talk about it. You want to hide away, and you don't want nobody to know, you know? And so I was lucky to be operating in that sort of environment where that was the kind of energy and ethos. And so, like I said, part of your creative process is embracing failure because, because all, all of your creative ideas are not going to be a hit. And you need to be open to that and know that, but know that each idea is a stepping stone to the next thing. And you keep building on that to eventually get to the hit. Yeah? And so now me thinking, okay, how do I create this technology ecosystem? So I couldn't create it being in Trinidad. I ups and stepping out in faith. And that's a really next important thing. Stepping in faith where sometimes you don't see how the dots could connect looking forward. But looking backwards, you're like, yeah, boy. If I didn't take that step where I couldn't see the dots connecting forward, those things, when you look back, wouldn't have added up in this way. And so, step forward, went to San Francisco, because that's the mecca of technology. Went to meet with a friend of mine who happened to be a senior engineer at Twitter. Downstairs from the Twitter building, waiting third in line to get coffee, was the co-founder and CEO at the time of Twitter, Jack Dorsey. So my business partner and I were there waiting for the guy to come downstairs, and Jack was there. And I was like, bro, um, that's Jack Dorsey. He's like, who? I was like, man, he in his building. He was like, oh, yeah, OK. Um, so go and talk to him. And so I'd, I don't get starstruck, but I get like entrepreneur struck sometimes, you know? Like, if, so, so I started to get a little nervous, and I say, man, I don't want to mess this up, you know? So I say, hey, what, hey, what, hey, what? You go in first, you go in first. You talk to him, you talk to him, you talk to him. He look at me, he's like, what well, I'm to you, boy? Why are you so soft? Anyway, so he went in, he opened, he said, hey, I'm Kirk Anthony. I'm from Jamaica. 
Um, do you have a couple of minutes to talk? Jack came out of line. He's like, yeah, let's, no problem. He's like, we're building a platform to connect the global ecosystems with the Caribbean. And we'd love to explore you being a part of that. And he was, uh, and he was like, OK, so what, what is it exactly? He was like, well, we're hosting first an event um, that brings in a lot of these global resources into the region. And he was like, oh, wow, I have, I've, not, um, I've never been to Jamaica before. And he was like, that's pretty cool. And then he was like, hey, um, who's your friend here? I was like, well, I'm Kyle. Good to meet you. <laughs> He said, um, okay, great, great. He's like, where are you from? I was like, I'm from Trinidad. He's like, oh, wow. I used to go to Trinidad up until the age of 16. Actually, more so to Tobago with my mom. I was like, wow, that's, nobody would ever know that story. That's pretty cool. Um, and I was like, well, the event is not in Trinidad. It's in Jamaica. He's like, all right, cool. I'd never been to Jamaica before. Um, tell me more about it. We told him more. He said, here's what. He sent me an email. We'll see if we can make it happen. I said, what's your email? He said, jack at twitter.com. I said, oh, <laughs> that's obvious. <laughs> Anyways, so my friend came downstairs, took a picture of us, and then spoke to him, had a meeting, went back home, sent Jack the email. Jack responded within a few hours and said, hey, Kyle, it was great to meet you guys. I've copied in my executive assistant. Um, and then the executive assistant responded and said, hey, Kyle, we've blocked off these dates for Jack's calendar. Keep us posted. And I was in June. By December, Jack was on his private jet with six of his friends to come to my event. He'd never been to Jamaica. This was the event in his second year. And this was me walking out in faith, believing that something would happen. So it was an element of my belief, my creative energy, knowing that I needed to not be here. And I just, I didn't have a plan necessarily. I just knew that being here, and by here, meaning in Trinidad, wasn't the best place to build what I wanted to build. That catalyst of Jack coming to Tech Beach was, was, was a significant catalyst. We ended up being written about in Forbes, Inc. Magazine, the next year, Google ended up being our title sponsor. The year after that, Meta. Well, this year, it's Tech Beach in Miami. Uh, Google is our title partner again. And now we're, we're building a really amazing ecosystem of some of the best people in technology from these massive global brands who historically have really just overlooked us. So fast forward, it started in 2016. We're in 2023. We're now building a platform overall that goes beyond just the event, whereby we're educating founders, technology founders, through a program that we have a partnership with the Inter-American Development Bank. And we're hoping then that we can begin investing in founders across our region and globally, Caribbean founders who are building amazing things anywhere so that we continue to recognize, accelerate, grow, catalyze, Caribbean people who are building things anywhere in the world and demonstrating that amazing things can come from us. And so I share that story as a bit of speaking about a couple of things. One, understanding that creativity isn't just about the artist and the designer. It's that it's, it's an approach to thinking about solving a problem in a way that hadn't necessarily been solved before. It's about grit. It's about embracing failure. Because there's no creative process without constant iteration and embracing that process of knowing that it's not always going to hit. And it's going to fail sometimes. And don't take it personally. Just know that that is a part of the process. And so when my first company first failed, people were asking me, how are you feeling? My parents was like, oh, it, it was almost like a funeral. Like, they come sad, and they're like, oh, it's a sad day. And I was like, guys, the only thing I feel right now is exhausted. I just feel really tired that we put in a lot of energy to get to this point, and it didn't work out. But I'm 27 at that time, you know? I've, 
<laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of road ahead of me. You know, I have a lot of road ahead of me. And this is just the first. And if this is what I can do in just my few years starting as an entrepreneur, I'm really excited for what will be. So don't mourn this loss. <laughs> I said, this is just the start. I said, this is the start of my process, the start of our process to building something great. And that just belief in myself and that belief that we can build something truly global, globally appealing, coming from the region, it's my process, my creative process, my, my grit, my endurance. And I'm just happy that I could share this story with you guys. Thank you for having me. God bless. Thank you so much, Kyle Maloney, and thank you for encouraging us to dream big and to see the importance of our failures and to learn from it. Um, I want to bring on the second speaker because I love how Netco did this in terms of the young entrepreneur, and now they're bringing on the older, more mature, more experienced entrepreneur. I didn't say old in a bad way, Mr. Lewis, don't chide me. <laughs> so our second speaker will be discussing the implementation of innovative ideas. He holds a BSc in marketing and an MBA in international business. He is the director of Lewis Appliances, a former member of the Nihus board, and a junk lecturer at the Arthur Lockjack Global School of Business. He is also the co-founder of Carnicon, the global carnival convention. His brand, Island People, and mega events like Insomnia with the water, of course we remember that one, among others, ushered in an era of innovation in Caribbean events, carnival, and entertainment. For over 20 years in the entertainment and cultural sphere, he has been an industry leader, entrepreneur, and marketing strategist, educator, and change maker. And following the impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, he inspired his team to upskill and partner internationally to develop a suite of virtual event capabilities with unrivaled levels of accuracy and engagement. Please help me welcome a man who has practically done it all, Mr. Derek Lewis, CEO of Eventology TT. Let's welcome him as he comes. Good day. How's everyone today? Yeah? I am very, very um, honored to be a part of this. I think um, NEDCO has been at the forefront of what I would say a leader in nurturing, a leader in guiding, a leader in making sure that there is someone to speak to as an entrepreneur. When I took on entrepreneurship, there was no such thing as NEDCO. So let us congratulate NEDCO on being who they are. I would also like to speak to Calvin Maurice, the leader of this organization, and to say that I took from your messages the passion, training up, and constant learning as a, a lesson I would always keep, and I hope we all keep it. From Mr. Anthony Garcia, technical advisor to the Minister of Youth, job creation and economic development comes from entrepreneurship. I took that from you, and I hope everyone takes it from you. Tony, the story of water. That's a story of life. I have a continuing story that if I have time, I will tell you how water turned into a morning of water. Thanks for your journey and sharing it with us. Tony has not shared. I want to tell you a secret. I asked Tony to present a year ago, two years ago, and he said, I'm not ready. This morning, I came early to hear him, and I told him, I said, is this the first time you're presenting? Or he said, this is my first. So Tony, thank you very much for sharing this story. <laughs> Nedco is the right place to share it, to start. Kyle, thinking bigger than you are, thinking older than you are, and having faith. That's what I took from you. 
and I hope that everyone takes it. I'm just trying to endorse because sometimes there's just a few words that you would take from an entire speech and I, I wanted to collect mine and share them again. So thanks. Okay, so there are a few things about creativity, ideas, and innovation that people confuse. It is something that I think we, we bundle them, that we are a creative country. Are we a creative country? Are we a country full of ideas? Or are we an innovative country? Anybody wants to say? Creative. creative. OK. So creativity is the development of original thought, creation, not searched thought. So creativity is the development of original thought fueled by ideas. Innovation, on the other hand, is applied creativity. It is applying that creativity to something that innovates and makes it useful. You know, there's a saying, I, I come up with sayings, and I wanted to share one with you this morning. Opportunity knocks, creativity kicks open the doors with ideas. Innovation invites everyone through those doors so that they can get something that they need because it provided a service. Then there's another thought, and I, I have no interest in Pinterest. I have no interest in Googling things. So I have an interest in searching my mind. And I wanted to search my mind before I came this morning because I think that's what people expect from me. So there's some things that I talked about, and it says ideas don't make money. Ideas have never made money. The people who put those ideas to work, they make money. There's another one, and I think you guys deserve every one of these little thoughts, as useless as they may be. Ideas are worth nothing. It's the problems they solve that gives them value. The bigger the problem, the more the value. And that was said before, and it would be said again. And this is one that I, <laughs> I like. Ideas are like retransfers. Don't just view them. Download and share them before they expire. Ideas are like we transfers. God gives us it, and then if we don't use it, they expire. Someone else gets it. I don't think God is a God that is selfish or prefers one over the other. We're all God's children, so we all get ideas. We all get that gift. If we don't open the box and play with whatever we got or use it, does not mean that God has forsaken us. It means that he's given us. We have not just operated what we've gotten. So innovation is what gives us the operation of ideas. Ivity is the life, as in activity, actions, life. Create, create, ivity, life. So creativity is giving life to your ideas. And understanding it from that perspective, I think it would give us a, a demystifying the whole creative process. So it says here, everybody talks about AI. AI is actually solving a problem. It's a better search. We ever searched for something and didn't actually get the answer? How do you do this? And you get a lot of opinions. You don't get an answer. So the big challenge and the big solution that AI provided is to make those things that you are searching for uh, comprehensive, to gather the thoughts for you and put them down in a way that you and others can enjoy. So solving problems is what AI has done for us. It helped Kyle this morning. Kyle, you didn't tell us what part of your speech was AI driven. <laughs> and Tony is the original AI. Yeah? He's OI. 
That's original intelligence. Hey. <laughs> okay, so I teach. So I have a circle here like all teachers would. <laughs> I have a methodology that I use, and I'm going to share it with you all. Um, okay, so ideas. They come by every day. I have three or four ideas. This morning I came up with an idea. I want to have a food festival. It's called Everything Slight. Yeah, chocolate, slight pepper. Food, slight pepper. Cake, slight pepper. Everything slight is my thought this morning for a food festival in Trinidad and Tobago that everything in a particular area has a slight something, even if it's a pimento. You like it? OK, so who, anybody from? And, Organization, anyway. So, <laughs> so um, ideas. You have an idea. You should share it. But share it with people that you feel comfortable with. Collective thought, it moves to insight. Insight is that aha moment. When you think about something, you go, ah, this is how it works. Then you analyze it, put it to test. You start thinking about it in an analytic way to see if it's good, bad, indifferent, if it's useful. Once that is done, you then adapt to suit what your analysis has brought, and then you test. Testing is stress testing before implementing. Testing is very important, and Kariri and other organizations within the ecosystem of Nehurst does this. And you can test your ideas in that way. You can test them online too, see who likes them, who doesn't like them. Implementation, that's when the second set of money is spent, when you've got to just do it. And alignment, which is after implementing, putting your product out, your service out, alignment is what you do to keep your product relevant. Tony talked about it, about aligning constantly every day, trying to figure out what radio is going to be the next day. Because success is not in this circle. Success is constant alignment. Success is a journey. You don't reach to where your company should reach. You don't get to it unless you limit yourself to where you're going to be. Kyle didn't say he wanted to be the biggest in Trinidad and Tobago. No. Your success is limited when you have a spot called success. You don't ever reach. If you reach, you failed. Success, however, is determined by individuals. So you will know what your success is. Success for me is doing the things that I want to do when I want to do it. The closer I get to that, it is not a sum of money. It's the liberty to do the things you want to do. I want to be here. When I got invited, I was excited. You know, I want to be here, so I'm doing what I want to do. I'm successful today because I'm sharing what I, what I think should be shared. So moving on, if I could get a click up. Moving on to what I think would be some of the steps in the creative process to unlock it. Now. You have an idea, what do you do? Your action. Write it down, protect it. After writing it, writing it is manifesting your idea. You remember the Bible is written, eh? if the Bible was just spoken about. <laughs> we wouldn't have it with us today. We wouldn't be able to have the word, because the word is written. When you have an idea, write it down. Say it loud. Speak about it. Before it was, many years ago it was, Hush, hush your idea. Now you have to speak it into being. You have to share it at a level within and uh, after protecting it. Protecting it is understanding the intellectual uh, property and the worth of your idea. So protect it. There are simple ways to protect it. But then the challenge, confidence or inf insecurity. So your, your, big, your big do is to have confidence. People are insecure, and that never gets anyone anywhere. So when you have an idea, be confident. Speak about it. Share it. Make sure you share it among people that you know before, after you protect it. So confidence and insecurity are the challenges. Collective thought. 
brainstorming, incubation of the idea and concept. At this point, you have to be selfless. Selfishness doesn't help. It used to. Insight is that aha moment that I spoke about. Most people have an idea, and until they could understand how it could be actually applied, there's no aha moment. It's just an idea. It's floating around. Doubt and belief is at that point where you don't believe or you believe in what you, you have as an idea. An analysis, analyzing. After the excitement, this is where the money is spent. The challenges is we don't have sometimes the resources to do this research, do the modeling, do the thinking, taking the stress points. And that's where organizations like uh, the ecosystem of the careers and the, uh, the, the, um, the NEDCOs come into being because they support this type of, uh, this, this area. The money, however, should not be somebody else's money. So many people have an idea and want to get somebody else's money to fuel their idea entirely. I would tell you that your money has to be first. It is an endorsement that you believe in what you have. So many people go to someone else to get money before they look to see what they have. And that's, uh, I think, something that we need to, to unlock in our mindset. Toronto and Tobago is a, is a very um, supportive country with resources to give and their programs to give, but we cannot look at them first. You cannot unlock your creativity with somebody else's money unless you put in. It's called skin in the game. People want to know you have skin in the game. If you don't have skin in the game, huh? You know, one of my, one of my, my staff told me, I want wings for my costume a couple of days. And I'm buying a costume, but I want, I say, you're buying it? She says, yes. I say, okay, I'll get the wings. But you'll pay by going into the gym. I'm giving you a membership so that your wings, you can carry them with you, right? But you go to the gym. You have to pay. You have to have skin in the game. You can't just want wings and somebody gives you the wings and you, you know, she wants to fly. <laughs> so, objective or subjective? When you analyze, so many people are object, subjective about their analysis. I like this kind of clothing. I think that this type of person will wear my, needs to wear my clothing. Do you think the owner of some of the biggest stores care who wears their clothing? No. It doesn't matter. It's that people use it. You are in beauty. Beauty is the biggest business. People look at, at that business as if it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's mega. It's, it is absolutely fabulous that someone is in beauty and looks at it as beauty and not another name that it's called, yeah? Um, but you have to say, anyone can come and enjoy my beauty products, not this one and that one, because if you want to live with the classes, sell to the masses. If you want to live with the masses, sell to the classes. It's a common statement. A lot of entrepreneurs have great ideas and expect it to be leveraged to a certain type of person or a certain uh, level. And please, make sure that you're generous like God has been generous to give you the idea. You didn't buy the idea. Make sure that everyone can enjoy it. And when everyone can enjoy your ideas, that's when success comes in a monetary way. Next. So the challenge is to adapt. After you have analyzed, you need to adapt. If it's analyzed and you know what the issues are, you can rework it. You can remodel it, you can recreate it. The problem here is a lot of people are closed-minded. That's the challenge. Are you open-minded enough to someone to think, that, is, that doesn't taste good? We do focus groups. We have people you know, taste our product, and guess what they tell? Yeah, it tastes all right. In Trinidad and Tobago, if somebody tells you, ask you, your hair, how, do, how does my hair look? 
and they say, um, different. <laughs> it looks different, like, you look different. Different is a problem. <laughs> Can I get a witness? This different is a problem because we do not like to critique. We do not like to analyze ourselves. We do not like to analyze somebody's product. It don't taste good. I didn't like one of the shirts that you had. I thought the collar was made of a material that it should be a little tighter on your neck. I tell him that. I talk to him. Tell your friends and be able to take this, you know, not as critique. The word criticize is a neutral word. I could positively criti critique or I could negatively critique. You have heard Trinidad has made this a negative word. But don't criticize me, come to criticize me. As if criticizing is only negative. You can have positive criticism and be open-minded. To be closed-minded would lock you out from the possibilities. Testing, focus grouping, posting it for responses. You know, we had to actually build stores back then and put the products and create them and make them. Right now, you just have to get a graphic artist to design your t-shirt and put it up online and then find out how many people like it and then how many people want to buy it and then know how much. I sat in Google at a conference. They invited me. And I sat next to the person who did Spanx, the line of underwear, undergarments. Uh, and, and well, I, I helped Google for entrepreneurs for no money for a year and a half as they were in Trinidad. And there was this young man who came to me and said, OK, you know, nobody's listening to me. I said, I'd listen to you. His name is Jared, uh, Jared Thomas. He said, I, I said, he said, nobody's listening to me. No entrepreneurs. I said, I'd listen to you. Come, let's go. Go on Chamber of Commerce. I brought some of my friends. I said, Joe, name me this one, that one. Come and listen to this guy. We listened to him. He actually had me for a year. I had to tell my wife, I'm going to Google. I'm going to do this retreat. I'm on a weekend. I'm going to spend the weekend with them overnight. I'm sleeping with the Google guys. Eventually, this young man, Google called and said, uh, Mr. Lewis, uh, we'd like to invite you to Sacramento. Uh, all expenses paid. Um, with, we want you to sit at the table with uh, uh, Reese Hoffman, the head of LinkedIn, who started it, uh, MC Hammer, and the person who started Spanx. I said, why? They said, we understand that you worked for a year and a half as a Google angel. I said, I didn't work as a Google angel. I was helping a young man. They said, well, from doing what you did, we understand that you only got paid a teacup. I said, oh, I said, yes. Because when Jared asked me, what do I want to be paid for all this work? I told him, I like the Google teacup. And he told that to Google. And I was invited, all expenses paid, to sit at a round table. And I listened to the Spanx story. She did not have a product. She had no undergarment for, for, for women. She had no support system. She just had an idea. And she would creep into dressing rooms and give her idea to women and have them try it on and see how it fits and post it online. Get people to purchase ahead. She had no stock. She got 8,500 8, orders before she had a company. This is what you can do today when you have an idea. You can actually activate it by doing the analysis rework and testing it by putting it up, doing a pop-up, doing a creative appearance online. So to do this, you have to be fearless. You have to look. You have to listen. And as the head of this organization said, you have to constantly learn. Yeah, thank you for that. You have to constantly learn. You have to be fearless, like Kyle said, not fearful. Because this is where a lot of people fail. To implement, there's a project that I have called <laughs> Implementation is Interesting. There's another dollar sign there. A lot of people reach to a point and they stay on set. I have a presentation called Ready, Go, Set. Because that's what life is. At this point of implementation, it says just do it. Execute, launch, do the hard, intense work, spend some money. The problem is that some people are not driven. Some people are passive. That's the challenge that you face. But at that point, 
ready, set, go, <clears throat> is what people usually do. I am inspiring you and I'm encouraging you with all the research that you could do online today. You don't have to put up a brick and mortar. Ready, go, set would be a better way to implement. And I'll tell you why. We cannot ever know when the right time would be. The right time to start your business is not the right time. Oh, we're children going to school. Um, I, when this one finished common entrance, uh, when I'm trying to get the amount of money that I need, just the right amount for this time, that time will never come. Well, when I got my back pay, and you know, it will never come. How many people are stuck in set? Ready, set. For a lifetime, waiting for the right amount of money, the right time, the right idea, the right thought, the right people, the right everything. It's never going to come. Apple and Samsung, they are going with ready, go, set a lot of the times. They release the phone before the other, the 12 and the 13 comes out, and then people say, well, you know, I find I have a little problem with the 13, and I have, not, you know, my thumb out, and then they have the 13.5. What do you think the 13.5 is? The 13X. That's their go. That is where, when you go, ready, go, your universe, your clients, the people you send it to will set you. You all understand that? You will be set by what you learn from going. So ready, go, set is probably the way that many of you who may be on set can get going, knowing that there's a support system to teach you as you go along. Alignment. Are you vigilant or are you indifferent? Alignment is the end because you will never Stop aligning yourself. If you reach to a point when you have done all these things, you have adapted, you have tested, you have implemented, and you now have a product, you have to constantly, constantly innovate, constantly get it going, constantly going back to the drawing board. The Japanese do it, it's called Kaizen. Yeah? They build a car. And as soon as it's built and it drives out, they start looking to see how they could make improvements to it. Success is a constant journey. The journey of success is what I would encourage you to be. So folks, be open-minded, be fearless, be driven. Be open-minded, be fearless, be driven, be vigilant. If you could roll my slide back, be confident, be selfless, believe, do not doubt, be objective and not subjective. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have one story before ending, the story of insomnia. I've started a lot of businesses. I nurture, mentor, and I have three businesses now that I'm coaching. <laughs> um, but I want to tell you about insomnia because our cultural context, people are not understanding how things start and how things come around. Tony talked about water. I was inspired by water. I came back here from the US and, you know, I was doing events. They called me island people in a derogatory way. I was walking, going onto a soccer field and they didn't know two guys were from the islands and we were scoring all the goals. Right? And they were shouting upstate New York. It was thousands and thousands of Americans. They didn't know what to call us. And they were shouting. I was running on the field and I saw peanuts being thrown on the ground. And I was like, peanuts, huh? I guess that's their culture up here in Oneonta State. And then I saw a banana drop. And when I saw the banana drop, I was like, wait, so I'm starting to zero into what these people are saying. And they were shouting, the entire crowd, 4,000 college-age students were shouting, island people, go home. Island people, go home. And this was the show. I didn't know what it was. That's the first time I heard island people. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Hmm, doesn't sound bad. I am um, actually, there's a Bajan, there's a Jamaican, two Trinidadians, a guy named Richard Chinapu and myself. You know, we had a soccer scholarship in the US, and it was like 
island people. I was like, Richard, boy, that island people sing song in good. I'm going to print some T-shirts. <laughs> and I printed T-shirts at island people. Then I printed island style. Then I printed uh, club dread. And then I printed um, a cultural one called uh, cultural, uh, tribal. And guess what? People came. People bought. People got their identity. The equivalent of Nicki Minaj today would have discovered themselves when island people came out in New York. But it came out of someone calling me negatively island people. I didn't take it for anything. With insomnia, I saw Tony's water. I came back from Panorama one, one evening. We had nothing to do from 2 o'clock in the morning. Panorama was finished, and there was nothing to do. We have a problem. There's nothing to do in Trinidad and Tobago between 2 o'clock and it's the middle of a party time. So I decided I'm going to try to do an event. Let us do something. And I call my boys. I'm a Vail boy. So I call my boys from the Vail, Wayne Henry. I said, Wayne, you know, we could do this thing. We could probably do a party. And he said, well, my mom could make, no, I said, my mom could make roti. And he said, my mom could make doubles. I said, doubles? We, insomnia will be by you. I mean, girl, um, Veil Vibe will be by you. So Veil started because somebody's mother could make doubles, my mom could make roti. And it was after Panorama, we wanted something to do. We had nothing to do. I asked the promoters and the presenters at that time, who were the big guys, if I can have a party and use the bands that they had. They said, no, I can't use it. And nobody talked about when you have a big idea, you would always have obstacles. It's adversarial. The adversary is there whenever your idea is really good to stop you. So we didn't talk about it. Kyle talked about believing. But believing will take you past that adversarial lash, as they say. So they said, don't do, you cannot get the bands. And I was like, we can't get the bands? I was like, OK, so why? Because we have them until the morning. I said, what time are you using them till? The big promoter said, till 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, but then I want them from 5 and 6. He says, no, they're contracted to us, so you can't have them. So I could have Veil Vibe. I wanted to go now to make a fete out of insomnia. Veil Vibe was a party that was already going. I wanted to make a fete for the public. Cannot get the bands. So I decided that I would make a contract. I went to a lawyer, made a contract for three bands for the following day, Sunday. So I was no longer breaching a contract by any of the bands. The solution was, thinking it through, my contract is for the next day, because I'm hiring them in the morning. Your contract is for the evening. You can have the bands for the evening. And that was unlocking. And folks, one of these days, we'll have the opportunity to talk about unlocking. Yeah. <laughs> so folks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I hope that the rest of this entire effort by NEDCO is very successful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lewis. And let me also say a special good morning going out to our friends online. We did not forget you. And so we have some questions. So this is the Q&A session. Um, I know that some of the questions came in for Mr. Chow, but I know it is a general uh, question that Kyle and also Derek can address. And so I'll take it from online first. One of the first questions we have coming in is, what would your advice to those entrepreneurs looking at support with respect to those you should work with? And I think this one might be for you, Kyle, because you mentioned that enabling environment and the support. And so they're asking, what would your advice to those entrepreneurs looking well, they said at here, but I think looking for support with respect to those you should work with. And so, Kyle, you can take that question. Hello? Okay. No, repeat the question for me sure. one more time. Sorry. What would your advice to those entrepreneurs looking for support with respect to those you should work with? Okay, yeah. Um, I think we, we live in a time now where people are more accessible than ever before. And so, I get so many... Uh, founders and people in general reaching out to me on different social platforms, just asking questions about how, would I, how I would have done something, how I met someone, some advice on an, a certain aspect of their business. 
I think like the answer is always no if you never ask, right? And so just ask. And so I think as a, as a young person coming in and not necessarily having a wide network, I think it's, it's all about determination to really wanting to build that network and build that, those mentors and, and those relationships. And once you take it from, from an approach that is, that is thoughtful of the person's time and being very, I guess, like focused and deliberate around the questions that you have and the things that you want to achieve, uh, m my statement is reach out. Reach out to as many people. We have like so much access mm -hmm. through different social networks that so many people are more available and you'd be res surprised by who responds. Thank you. Permit me to just take one more question from our online viewers just so that they know that they're included. And this one can go to either Derek or Kyle. Before you started, how many times were you told no? And what advice would you give to someone with a unique skill and great idea, but not much financial backing and support? All right. So first, how many times were you told no? And what advice would you give someone with a unique skill and a great idea, but not much financial backing and support? I would say to them that what they have to do is package their idea properly. Um, make sure that they know the value of their idea, but package it properly. If I take a diamond and I do not shine it and I do not put it forward on a crusted top in a velvet, blue velvet um, box. It has very little value if I look at you, if I present a diamond in the palm of my hand. So I would say spend time presenting your idea, all the facets of it, and all of its, um, of its, its, its value needs to be studied, researched, and delivered properly, and, and, and you will get people buying into your idea. Nice. I've been told no. Many times. Yeah, can't count. <laughs> Carl, you want to add anything quickly? No. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll turn it over now to the audience members in the room. Do we have any questions for Kyle or even for Derek? Yes, Blue Jacket, I see you. This gentleman has a question. Good day, everyone. I am Dennis Jagannath, a transformational coach. I just want to start this way. I have been trained by some of the best in the world, Grant Cardone, John Maxwell, you name them. Mm. I am amazed and flabbergasted by our local people here, Mr. from the CEO, Mr. 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 Calvin Maurice, and yeah. Tony, and every one of you all here. I'm amazed and I mean that. So I want to just thank you all that we have such great people in our country who can really grow us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your comments. I can take one more before I head back online. Anybody else? Any question? Okay, let me head back online quickly. Another question coming in from online. Were there any times when an idea did not pan out financially and were you not in a healthy financial position to deal with it, how did you recover? So kind of jumping off the first question, but how did you recover, even if it is you had an idea and no one was backing you? Derek or Kyle? <laughs> yeah, in my, in my story, I spoke about, about failure um, and my first company now working out. And um, that in-between time where uh, the failure of my last and on to my second is, there was a lot of, a lot of gray area. I think in that time, like, I kind of came down to asking myself, what is, what is the thing that we're really good at, and how can I hustle and grind and get some clients to, to pay the bills? And so what we were really good at, at least myself within the company, um, I led sales and marketing, and so I was a marketer. And we did a really good job of building that brand and, and, and marketing, and I really turned myself into a marketing agency and really hustled and got some clients and it was it was a grind like speaking to a number of businesses every day and just trying to figure out how we could work and just bridge that gap between what had just not worked out and what could be the next thing and in between I made first into a marketing agency and today we're still operating as such but I 
do way more work with Tech Beach. And so I think that period of time really comes down to like just grit and hustle and just finding those opportunities where your natural eye is not going to see it, but you need to put yourself in place for the opportunities to take for them to happen. And it only happens through just grit, hard work, just pushing to make it happen, man. Like, there's no replacement for that. Mm -hmm. Good. Derek, anything to add? I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm constantly in recovery because I'm constantly failing. Yeah. And, um, but one success to every three failures is not a bad ratio. Mm. And I am at about two to one. So I'm doing okay. Nice. But I'm recovering every day. Every day. And I'm opening the floor one more time. Anybody has that last question for Derek or Kyle? No? All right. Well, let me thank you so much for participating in that Q&A session. And this is a simple but warm thank you from Ned. Ha, ha, ha.